what's up and welcome i am matthew msinga to the designer and developer from south africa this is my youtube channel coded design where i teach coding and user interface design guys i'm so excited we are about to reach our goal in this month i want to reach at least uh, 200 subscribers and i can see i'm already sitting at 173 let's keep on pushing guys please if you are new to this channel please subscribe and share my content back to business let's answer the most important question be warned this video is going to be a little bit longer because i want to add more value to you i want to see you succeeding we're going to discuss a lot of things um there are some things that happened uh in between the videos i've got some exciting news let's just jump straight into it the most important question that i think you might have is that is it worth it why must i watch matthew's videos where is this whole thing leading to why must i watch his series on react js and all the clones and all that stuff these are the questions that i also have when i'm some sort of watching the youtube thing and coding i want to know where is it leading to maybe me and you we are pragmatic we judge or value things based on their practical use so let me answer the question this is my intention for you okay number one i want you to build your own application not only with html css and php but i want you to be current i want you to be able to use react js and Next.js and tailwind css to build websites so in this channel we are more practical so let's come up with a proof as you can see here i'm busy with the whatsapp web ui what i'm excited about is that finally i've been struggling and i've damaged a lot of things i've broken a lot of um, one of my servers or a uh, shared disk space if you call it but finally i am able to take this local host web application js and react application as you can see now it's running locally i have managed to deploy it guys on my own coded design website as you can see here it's running on www.codeddesign.co.za okay it's running on www.codeddesign let's run it here is it it's running on www.codeddesign.co.za so for me i'm happy with this because it's practical it can give you an idea of my intentions with you if you can be able to start a react um, app and create it even if it's not this clone your own react or whatever even this one or you've decided to make a facebook clone i'm happy with it but if you can be able to deploy it and run it live it means that you can be able to take clients and uh, create a modern web application for them or modern website for them that adds value to you and at the same time you can be able to send these links to employers and say to them look maybe i might not be experienced or i didn't uh, go to school for react and next.js or even software development in general but look at my portfolios and this is how i have managed to get some international calls and international interview i just share the link of what i did and then people will feel like okay at least he deserves um, some sort of a chance let's see what he has to offer so guys as you can see it's running live just uh, a quick one let's prove that it's running live as you can see this is a node.js app it's running on this domain this is the app it's running okay so this is everything okay and then if i can stop the app from here that means i have stopped the app the node.js app it means that it's going to break here on www.codeddesign because as you can see the app is off but still locally it's running okay so guys um this uh it's some sort of my intentions are uh, for you watching my tutorials i want you to build things to do things what made me to take some time to do react and next.js app i didn't really know what am i going to do with this app because i'm used to php and html and i can host a php file and html file but this next react thing 
it's very complicated it has got some sort of a lot of technologies a lot of stack and it takes time and finally when i'm done with the project the project will remain local because i didn't know how to deploy it so i decided to take some time i even uh, uh, break one of my servers or one of my shared hosting space because of trying to deploy a Next.js app. Now I know how to exactly. Maybe in the following videos I will teach you how to. Okay, so let's just quickly start it. Start the Node.js app so that I can show you that it's going to run. Even you can uh, visit this uh, website, okay? I think it's running now. Let's see. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, as you can see, now it's running, okay? This is my other shared hosting space. As you can see here, when I visit this industry plug, I've made a lot of changes. I was fiddling. I wanted to understand how to deploy a Node.js app. And as you can see, this brings an error automatically. So this is some sort of a very uh, big problem. Maybe it might mean I will have to delete this uh, domain and create it from scratch or ask my uh, service provider to reset it okay otherwise enough about that guys so in this video uh, i know i'm talking about a lot of things i'm excited but i'm excited because i'm able to bring value into you and also show you where we are going okay so meaning that as we are developing this we are going to deploy it when we are done so that it can run on a server like this one okay so let's go back to where we are okay this is where we are in terms of this whatsapp ui clone this is where we want to go now let's dive deep into react js guys what we want to do we want to when we click here we want to remove this uh section okay simple you click here you remove this section so in this video i am going to give you in details what react does as compared to vanilla javascript and css and pure html okay so what i did uh, i went to the internet and i looked for a code on uh, w3 schools on how to hide and show uh, an element using javascript so whatever that we are going to do here with react js is the same thing that we can do with pure javascript and html so i want to show you how we would have done it using javascript and also i'm going to show you how react is going to do it so that you can some sort of understand what react does better okay so with um with uh, uh javascript okay as you can see now this tutorial is for to toggle height and show an element okay let's start with html this is html okay and this is javascript okay as you can see two separate files and uh, separate code code base okay react combined this combines this and this and it will come up with a new file extension which is jsx that's the first major difference okay as you can see so in react there is no html and javascript everything is combined in one place and the name of that file it's a uh, JSX okay let's continue what you do with uh, react obviously on HTML Sorman which JavaScript you've got your button the one that you want to listen for an on click event okay as you can see here on click event and then from then you can type the function that you want to be executed this is just pure HTML so this button will listen for an on click event when you click it it will do what it will execute this okay this part it's more similar to what react js will do however when you are defining this function to be executed the one that will hide and show an element in nextjs you don't have this code nextjs will handle this in a different way okay it's going to be simpler it's going to be more efficient it's going to be clean and also it's going to be some sort of quicker than this one okay so let's just get into detail to see what nextjs is going to do for us okay normally first uh, you declare a variable and you get the element that you 
want to manipulate which is here it's my div okay as you can see we are going to hide and show this my div okay so here is the id of that element okay here is the id of the element on react.js we are not going to get the ids of the element that will be done under the hood okay if the style of that element is display none then you must display block else display none as you can see here we are choosing if it's off the screen show it if it's on hide it in react.js we, we are not going to have this and also this idea of uh, the this if and else statement we are going to implement it differently okay now let's jump to the concept of react.js okay on react.js we are going to have the on click listener we must still listen for the event okay meaning that we must listen for when this event is being clicked that one is not going to change however now let's introduce something different on next.js when something is clicked obviously we are, uh, are going to call a function okay just like in uh, in javascript we are calling this function okay here that's where we are calling this function okay but we are call we are going to call this function not to do this but we are going to call it to set a state variable okay meaning that on next.js after we have an on click event listen for that on click event we have to declare a variable which is a state variable okay what is a state variable a state variable it's like an alarm okay uh, you can uh, ignore this ssr okay let me just do it so a state variable it's like an alarm okay listening carefully so that it can do something once a certain action is done uh, just uh, take, take a scenario of uh, the military there are some certain bombs that will explode when you cross a certain laser beam or whatever uh, triggering uh, a technology so as soon as you pass there it will explode also you can take uh, a sensor a light uh, a, i'm not sure if it's a day and light switch sensor or it's uh, a, a night uh, sensor but the one that when you pass through it your your lights of your own home will automatically be on so the state variable act as that alarm or as that uh, setup as soon as this on click event changes the state variable the alarm will be triggered in case in our case it's not going to be the alarm but an action will be taken meaning that the java uh, sorry um, react will react to the changing state okay meaning that from this on click we change a state variable that state variable is tied to a certain element as soon as that state variable changes the element that this variable is tied to it will be re-rendered it's more like being recreated and being displayed only that element that is the magic of um of react.js okay let's put this into perspective this is the element the target element that we want to show in height we are going to create a state variable and this state variable we will tie it to this element as soon as that state variable changes when we are clicking here what will happen to this element react will only re-render this dom element only this one more like refreshing normal html refreshes the whole page but react it's very good on picking only the element that is tied to the state once that state changes then this uh, react dom uh, dom uh, react dom will some sort of react to that change of the state okay a bit confusing don't mind we are going to get into the practical aspect of it okay one thing that you must know about uh next.js now not react.js next.js is that next.js is so advanced in such a way that this code is running on the client because this is javascript html and css or tailwind because it's more like a browser side of a code next.js is advanced it also runs on a server so meaning that when it runs on a server 
all the features of JavaScript that are available for interacting with the human. They are not available there. So I'm just warning you that whenever we are going to render, we are going to use a browser side features like clicking on things. That's a browser, things like this. That's a browser. We need to tell Next.js that, okay, convert the page that we have now, which is currently by default, it's a server side. Let's convert it to a client side. As you can see, this page now, it's what? It's a server side. Okay. Let's test that to see if this is a server side. What we are going to do, we are going to go to uh, this item, this item, and then we must assign the on click event on this item. Okay. Which is we are doing step number one, this one. We are just assigning an on click event and we want to see when we click here. Is there anything that is going to happen? Okay, I hope you get that one. So let's look for that um, item. Here is that item, SVG X mark. Okay, it's this one. So what we are going to do, we are going to do to target the div that surrounds that icon. Okay, so what we are going to do on that div, we are going to assign the on click event. Okay, sorry about that. Let's see, let's do it like this. Okay, I need um, the key C, okay. On, on click event, okay, let's see, on click event, okay. As you can see, we are listening to an on click event just like in normal, um, what can I say? just like in in normal um, JavaScript. Okay, so we are going to alert. Okay, this is normal, pure JavaScript, we're going to alert and say done. Okay, and then we will save that. Okay, so my assumption will be since this is a JavaScript that is meant to run on a server because of Next.js capability, this is not going to work because this works only on a client side kind of JavaScript. Okay, remember, when we talk of a server, let me just give you a perspective. This is running on a server, right? www.codedesign.co.za. Okay, whatever that we see here, it's more like HTML, which is more like a browser based uh, JavaScript, whatever that maybe if we've got some interactions is JavaScript, but it's uh, browser based. You don't see anything that talks about the server here, okay, which is the server side. It's this one. You don't see any of whatever code or whatever. So meaning that at this point in time, the JavaScript that is running, that is active on this page is only for server based. It's not related to interacting with a user, okay, meaning that this alert is not going to work, okay. Okay, let's save. Compiled successfully. Let's see. Okay. Uh, rerun. Okay. We, are, we want the local one. Rerun it. Okay. And then we are going to click here. Nothing is going to happen until we convert that uh, JavaScript. As you can see, we are having an error. Okay. Alert is not defined. But if this is just normal JavaScript, which is like your browser based JavaScript, why it says alert is not defined because the function alert, it's more like a default function of the JavaScript uh, language. Okay, so it means that we have to convert this because of Next.js, we have to convert this, we have to tell Next.js we are interested in rendering this as a client by use client. Okay use client okay because of next.js's capability of rendering things from its of rendering uh, pages from a server and also on the client side we need to tell it that we want this to be a client side because we want to use the capability of interacting with the user just like these click things and whatever so now let's see okay uh, my apologies for my slow internet. I hope you are learning. In this video, I want you to get the idea of what's going on. I want you to grasp the concept because this is what I've been struggling with too. 
I really didn't understand why Masai use React. Like I really didn't understand the concept of React. It makes it worse when it's Next.js, a framework built around React. Okay, and then now there is also Node.js in the picture. Uh, it was a bit confusing, but I've managed to watch a lot of video tutorials and then I've managed to some sort of uh, find a way to understand it and now i'm sharing it with you okay my apologies for some sort of um the slow internet and other things and also my computer okay uh, let's see what's going on is there any error okay here it created an error i understand okay da, 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 okay and then okay i tried to run it again when I was saving, so it was running again. As you can see, Next.js is uh, some sort of rendering client, and also it render the it renders uh, the the server side. Okay. Obviously, I can see it's taking some time. What I'm going to do uh, to help it to refresh and speed things up for the interest of time. Let's see where it is at the moment behind the scene okay as you can see it's still uh, some sort of stuck on the same place what i'm going to do i'm just going to cancel it and rerun it again okay okay i'm just gonna cancel it as you can see i'm canceling it yes and then i'm just gonna run it again um i think it's going to be quicker uh, 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 that way okay npm run dev okay now what we want to do, we want when we click that X, it must uh, some sort of run the, 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 the alert, the alert message box. Um, however, what might happen also, I'm just uh, giving you a heads up uh, before it happen. What might happen also based on how we have added, uh, based on how we have added this alert based on how we have added this alert this way, okay, this alert might even pop up even before we click the button. If that happens, I will explain and I will show you how are we going to fix it. So in case that it happened, this alert might quickly pop in even without us clicking. However it happened, we know that we are on the right track. As long as it shows, it means that Next.js acknowledged our request to use this as a client. So it runs the alert as some sort of a normal valid client side JavaScript. And then from there, we will take it from there. Okay, as you can see, it's compiling. I think now it's going to be more quicker. And as you can see, um, when you are running uh, this uh, Node.js uh, commands and other things, you will see a lot of messages like these ones these catching failed and whatever obviously as a developer when you see the word fail you are afraid of bugs okay sometimes you just have to give it some time as you can see this might scare you to say that hey there's a lot of errors don't mind it will do this when it's done since you know your code is fine it's working perfect it will resolve its own things and then you can see here it's going to say uh, execution successfully or something so when you see a lot of these things just give it some time as you can see it's compiling again then after that it's going to say successful and then we are good to go so at least don't be uh, that afraid of these things of whatever it is doing now uh, because uh, before I, I used to be some sort of scared of these things when this happened i used to be like ish how am i going to fix it okay but now don't be afraid i've got your back just watch it and wait for it to finish whatever that it's doing okay uh let's quickly just double check as you can see guys boom we've got done here meaning that it has compiled successfully remember i told you that it's not going to wait for us to click it's going to run automatically that one it's a topic for another day i don't want to digress from what i want to show you okay now let's change that okay now let's change that let's make sure that it only it's only triggered when we press that button let's copy this alert now let's use a javascript uh, arrow function which is uh, this is an anonymous function 
okay it's like a function without a name and then we will put the same code after this okay now let's see what will happen okay i hope it's done compiling here okay i hope it is done here okay i hope it's done here let's refresh okay as you can see guys it does nothing so let's click now boom you see now we are winning so in at this point in time we are more like uh simulated this when you click here this function will be executed as you can see but now let's go to the main thing we are not going to do this we are not going to get elements from uh, the one that we are going to hide we are going to use this approach okay meaning that now what do we want to do we need a state variable our alarm and we need to link the state variable to the box obviously it's not as clear as i'm telling you because this is a concept but you will do when we are actually doing it let's create our state variable okay uh let's move this down okay now what i'm going to do somewhere here okay somewhere here i'm going to let me copy this okay i'm going to declare a state variable my apologies for this syntax but you just have to memorize it and use it as it is okay our state variable it's going to be um box height okay let's name it box height okay and then this is the actual variable that we are going to use next year as we will watch for this variable as soon as it changes it will re-render the dom element that is associated with that with that uh, uh state variable okay when it re-renders the state the box that is related to that re that variable we would by then have assigned a css property which is hide so when it's re-rendering it it will re-render it but it will have a different class css property which is hide so when it's re-rendering it it's going to disappear because when it's now it doesn't have height the display it's block but once we do something on that variable and then this is being re-rendered with the height uh, css property then it's going to be off the screen okay let's just continue this is the state variable so now we must also declare a function that will change this state this state variable we don't change it like state variable is equal to that's not how we roll in react js so we need a function usually when you write this function you just say set because you want to set you want to set this variable so you just set box height the only thing that we can do here we can put uh, uh, a, a capital letter here okay so this is the state variable this is the main guy the important person the one that react will look for as soon as it changes it will re-render the, the element that is associated with this variable and then this is how we set how we change this variable and then we need to equate this to use state okay as you can see once i'm i've entered this use state automatically import use state from react this has been imported if it doesn't happen to you please import it like this maybe it's because of i have got a uh, react redox uh, plugin that does this for me automatically in case it doesn't happen to you please import it and then from there we need to initialize this variable so let's initialize it and give it an empty string okay let's give it an empty string and that's it guys we are done with this stage we have created our alarm so the alarm it's always going to trigger something it's going to make a noise or create a certain action because of the changes that has been made in that state variable okay so now we need to associate this variable with a certain dom element that will be re-rendered okay now let's go back here remember we said it's a blue box okay let's go to that blue box okay which is uh, this one remember the the the, the wi-fi logo the wi-fi svg icon and the x marks they are inside what they are inside this let me just type here 
inside this blue box okay let's see what will happen okay as you can see this blue box okay so what we are going to do now instead of writing this blue box what are we going to write okay we are going to open this uh, curly bracket what does this mean this means that we are writing a javascript inside the html so this is jsx remember i told you that a jsx it's a combination a blend of html and javascript so by putting this um state variable here this is our alarm okay let me say uh, alarm okay and then let me comment it uh not everything let me cut this okay let me write alarm here okay this is my alarm okay as soon as this state variable changes this whole div will be re-rendered okay so this is the idea behind uh, react it means that this is what react is trying to do i think this is the last uh uh part where i'm trying to explain uh, the concept after that we are going to get into the actual thing okay let me do this let me do this let me do this okay okay this is what react does behind the scene okay we've got html element or we've got the dom uh okay okay so this is the dom we've got these are html elements or dom element okay what react does instead of when this change when a change has been done here you refresh everything just like what normal html does what react does it looks for a change in a state variable for instance just like this one once you change the state variable it will trace that state variable it will find that element associated with that state variable it will re-render that element only okay that's the idea behind it doesn't render everything that makes react uh, application very fast and uh, intuitive and some sort of interesting uh, quick loading time they feel like a normal application like your mobile application okay now now that we have associated this state variable our alarm with this app okay we need to instead of alerting okay instead of alerting where where are we alerting um okay down here instead of alerting here guess what we are going to do we are going to use this function that we have declared here this is a function you use it to set what to change the value of the box height so inside box height at the moment let me just quickly show you what's inside it's an empty thing okay let's put something okay so that you can see that inside this variable this state variable there is a text called something okay as you can see here the text called something will be here okay let's quickly prove that before there was this blue but now let's see what's there something okay are you with me happy with that yes so as soon as i change this state variable this will be re-rendered very fast you're not going to notice it but that's what will happen okay then let's go back and um now let's change this what is um, some sort of a method or a protocol to change this variable let me tell you this is not the protocol okay this is not the protocol unfortunately this is not the protocol okay this is not the protocol let's just run it ah no 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 if we run it and we encounter an error maybe my computer might be slow as a result uh, we might be uh, we might delay and all those things but i was just showing you that that's not the protocol so how do you do it you use this function that we have declared here that goes hand in hand with this which that function is set box height so when we are clicking the x icon we want to do now instead of displaying something on the screen we want to set box height and we want to say now new value okay we want to change it to 
new value as you can see guys once you click on the icon this function will be called which is called new value and once this function is called once this function is called it will assign a new value to box height and react will notice that the state variable box height has been modified it will trace it down okay let me just click here so that we can see it it will trace that value down until it finds it once it finds it it will re-render the whole uh, it will re-render this um, element with the new value okay let's check that what's the initial value okay it's still processing the initial value it's uh something when i click here suppose this will change obviously the only thing that you are going to notice you are going to notice this value being changed you are not going to notice that the whole dom element has been re-rendered okay uh, obviously as you can see my computer is uh, starting to come with its own funny tricks because by now suppose uh, we would have been done uh, compiling okay that's why i didn't want to make all those unnecessary testing things but however let's see i think you know by now that once it start to do this we just have to cancel and re-render okay let's see here we just have to say cancel control c let's see control c cancel and then it's going to ask us do you want to cancel yes and then we are going to start from scratch oh okay he didn't even ask us let's start from sketch npm run dev okay it's going to show us a lot of things a lot of errors don't mind just wait for those errors to, to fix themselves and then uh it will run nicely okay uh, let's just wait for it to do whatever it wants to do as you can see here okay so guys um that's about it with um jsx it's a it's a combination of uh it's a combination of javascript and html so meaning that now you don't have separate files you don't have a file for html and a file for javascript okay react as the name implies based on my own limited understanding is that it reacts to a state variable and it will do all this behind the hood that's the essence of it okay Okay, let's just refresh here. Let's go and check if uh, it has managed to render here. Okay, it's still waiting for some things. Okay, but I think we are getting there, guys. My apologies for the delay. Let it do all the errors. Um, fear nothing. When it's done with those errors, it will say build successfully or executed successfully, and then it will show up here. Nothing more nothing less okay so i'm matthew singati the designer and developer if you feel like this is adding value into your own overall understanding of react js and um next js please 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 do me a favor i want to hit 200 subscribers this month okay and then after that then i'm going to start to build my own community meaning that i'm going to fix my website which is this one at the moment it's hosting uh at the moment it's hosting here is it at the moment it's just hosting this sample node.js application that we are busy with so i'm going to create my own website and i'm going to build a community that's where i will start um writing my own thoughts on react and um, publishing some pdfs and then obviously you will have to sign up for my community and then i will notify you send you some information and whatever and then that's where i will start uh, to do paid courses okay because at the moment i'm only doing youtube videos if i can be honest okay back to business guys as you can see we've got something as a default value let's see when we click here what will happen do you see that we've got a new value so meaning that this has been re-rendered with the new value do you get what i'm trying to say i hope you get me so now let's be clever now this new value let's change it okay let's change this new value to 
um, to a um, to a CSS or to a Tailwind CSS utility class which is hidden. Okay, let's test it. If we add this utility class hidden here, okay, uh, what is the highlighted thing hidden? Property as flex. Okay, hidden applies the same property as flex. So you cannot have display flex and display hidden at the same time. Okay, let's remove flex for now for the sake of that. Let's see if is this going to disappear because of that uh, utility class which is hidden. Let's see. Let's see, guys. If it does that, that will mean we will make use of it. Okay, so that we can hide this element when we click here. Okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. It looks like my computer uh, takes time to run. Looks like it takes time to run. And I don't know what's going on with my stomach. It's making some funny noise. Obviously, it's been a while since I ate, but however... That's not much of a problem. Okay, guys, since my computer is um, taking some time to, to, to re-render, okay, what I'm going to do, I will be forced to continue and some sort of finish the code, but I will explain. Obviously, I wanted to take things step by step, show you, re-render, show you, but it looks like now I have to go ahead and write a lot of code and then execute. I hope you will understand. As you can see now, it's taking some time. Okay, that's not a problem. <clears throat> What do we want to do? We want to take this, okay? That CSS uh, utility class from Tailwind. And then we want to assign it here. So meaning that when we are clicking here, the state variable is going to be hidden, okay? Fine. But if it's here, if it's here it doesn't serve any purpose because here it doesn't act as a utility class that hides things okay so we need to take it away from here now let's put it where it's valuable okay let's add it here as a what as a class okay as you can see once hidden it's here it will hide this i hope you get on what we are doing when we are clicking here, this value, okay, let's say plus, um, things are not going according to the way I want, okay? Okay, so what we need to do first, we need to add this, ne, this variable, okay? So now what, after that, we need to take all of this and put it inside here, okay? This is how you concatenate in JavaScript. My computer, it's a bit slow. Come on. Okay. Uh, I wonder what might have happened. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is too much. Uh, this is too big. And to be honest, I don't really like that. What I might have done. Let me control minus. Yeah, I think it's zooming out a little bit. And also... I'm used to this sidebar. Okay, guys, we are back to where we are. Sorry for that. Okay. So what we are doing here, as you can see, we are adding the value of the state variable. Initially, the value is going to be what? It's going to be an empty string. Where is it? Oh, it's going to be something. There is no class called something. Let's remove it so that it can be an empty string. Okay. So meaning that in these utility classes, we've got empty string plus this. Doesn't make any difference. As soon as we click here, here, the state variable will change because of this function will change it. Meaning that here we are going to have hidden. Once this element is being re-rendered, re-rendered by React.js, when React is reacting, to it to the change of the state it means that now is going to be re-rendered with the uh, css uh, element hidden on tailwind css utility class hidden and it's going to disappear that's all guys so now we can cancel the re-rendering here as we usually do and start from scratch and then 
suppose we are finished with this tutorial because as you can see once i some sort of do a lot of re-rendering obviously my computer is not that powerful so it always jams here and there okay and it, it's been a while since it's uh i uh, it's been on okay now as you can see let's say npm run dev and click enter so we're just going to wait for this to render properly and fully and then from then we will be done and i hope that i have i did my best in explaining how react works okay as you know i'm making singer t from coded design um this is my youtube channel so please guys um help me on making my dream to happen to reach 200 subscribers this month as you can see um i'm busy now with next js react js and uh, uh tailwind css okay before that as you can see i've been doing some wordpress some spotify clones php you see okay so you can just uh visit my channel and see other cool uh tutorials okay let's go back here go back to business okay it's busy soon it's going to show an icon here and once it does that we will know that we are winning my apologies for my slow computer and everything but i hope you do get the point okay okay i hope you do get the point so what is important is for you to understand the state variable react state okay this state variable okay that's the most important thing okay now it's still doing its own thing acting like there are some errors okay i think now it's done let's see okay okay as you can see now it's loading okay um okay i don't know why the css is broke oh remember i have removed that display flex i need to put it back that's not a problem now guys let's cross fingers let's click here and see what will happen as you can see gone it disappeared okay that means we have won guys i'm happy that we have won and you've been uh watching this tutorial up until the end the only thing that we have to do we need to go to that uh, blue box okay we need to go to that blue box okay remember here we we had a display of flex and we have uh, some sort of uh, removed it okay and also tailwind css was telling us that display of height which is hidden and flex it's more like it's a conflict it's like you are hiding thing something and displaying it at the same time which uh it's it's understandable okay i understand that meaning that we must have a way of uh some sort of choosing between i do understand that but guys we have reached the end of this uh video as you can see now that flex is already here obviously if this doesn't work i might understand because i'm trying to be unfair to tailwind css i'm putting two conflicting css statements okay i do understand that but if it works it works as you can see uh, it doesn't really really work why because i have not removed uh this one so it will mean that in the next video we just have to choose between this or this one it's like now we need to play around with our programming skills and choose but however if we remove this one and only leave that one if we remove flex as you can see everything works as expected i'm matthew singer the designer and developer thank you so much for watching this video if you feel like this video has added value to your overall understanding of next.js react.js and tailwind css please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button i hope you've learned something today see you on the next one